In Unit 7.1, you were introduced to particle diagrams to represent compounds, which are two or more elements chemically combined together. In Unit 7.2, you were introduced to the terms ionic and covalent bonding and did the lab to discover the properties of each one of those types of bond. In this unit, you're going to look at how do those bonds actually form in terms of what's happening with the electrons. In the Lewis dot diagram activity that you did before this section of notes, you were, should have discovered that bonds are formed in two ways. They're either the transfer of electrons, so giving away electrons, or accepting electrons, or the sharing of electrons. So in this unit we're going to look at why do some elements give away their electrons while others accept and then why do some share. The number one reason that atoms give away, transfer, or share electrons is that they want a full outer shell and to achieve the octet rule which means eight valence electrons. If you look at the noble gases, group 18, you will see that all of them, with the exception of helium, have eight electrons in their outer shell. This is considered stable. And this is why our noble gases are often referred to as inert or non-reactive. So if you look at lithium, lithium has two energy levels and one valence electron. It will give away this outer shell, leaving it with only two electrons there, which it goes from a configuration of 2, 1 to a configuration of 2. And if you look, that's the same configuration of helium with two. So lithium, by giving away an electron, gets an electron configuration similar to helium. The term ion refers to a charged particle. So up to this point we've been talking about atoms as being neutral and that they have no charge. Well now we're going to look at the term ion. So metals will lose their electrons and form a positive ion. So if you look at group 1, they lose 1 and they have a plus 1 charge. Your group 2 metals, they lose 2, they lose their valence electrons and they have a plus 2 charge. Your group 13, the ones that have aluminum in it, they're going to lose 3 and have a plus 3 charge. Your nonmetals gain electrons and so if you remember electronegativity of nonmetals is very high meaning that it has a high likelihood of attracting electrons. So your group 15 with nitrogen in there, nitrogen is going to gain three electrons to have a negative three charge. Oxygen is going to gain two and therefore have a negative two charge. And then fluorine in, is going to gain one electron and have a negative one charge. So let's look at this in terms of Bohr's model. So we have our sodium which has three energy levels okay, and one electron in its outer shell. Sodium, the atom, is going to give that one electron away. So then it, an ion, it's only going to have two, and it's going to have eight electrons in that shell. So this radius, the ionic radius, is smaller because you've lost an energy level. So this has a configuration of 2, 8, 
1, this has a configuration of 2, 8, which if you look at the periodic table, makes it similar to neon. So let's look at the charge. So this one has 11 protons and 11 electrons, giving it a charge of 0. The ion still has 11 protons because it's still sodium, but now it only has 10 electrons. So that's where that negative, that positive one charge comes from. Let's do the same thing for a nonmetal. So you have oxygen. Oxygen has two energy levels with six valence electrons. giving it a configuration of 2, 6. An oxygen ion, it's going to gain 2 electrons, giving it a full shell of 8. So now it has a configuration of 2, 8. This radius, the ionic radius, is larger because the electrons are able to pull away from the attraction of the protons. So here we have 8 protons and 8 electrons, giving us a charge of 0. Over here you have eight protons still, but now we have ten electrons, giving us a charge of negative two. Electro Let's look at how a Lewis dot diagram for ions is different than the Lewis dot diagrams for atoms. So let's draw sodium's dot diagram. This is as an atom. When we draw it as an ion, sodium loses sodium loses one electron. So when you do its dot diagram, you're going to do brackets within the symbol and then the charge now up in the upper right hand corner. For oxygen, oxygen's dot diagram originally was six and it's going to gain two. So you're going to draw the box with its symbol. This time you're going to show all eight valence electrons around the symbol and then a charge of negative two. Again, up in the upper right hand corner. All right, so let's look at the two types of bonds that can be formed now in terms of what's happening with their electrons. The first one is an ionic bond. Ionics are the ones that give or transfer electrons. Look at this example here. Electrons from sodium are transferred to chlorine. And you can see that up here where they're transferring their electrons. So that means that sodium is losing its electron and it's becoming a positive charged ion and chlorine is gaining, so therefore it's becoming a negatively charged ion. So if you remember, ionic bonds are the formation between a metal and a nonmetal. So all of your metals lose electrons, and your nonmetals gain electrons. Our next type of bond are the covalent bonds, and these are the ones that share the valence electrons. So neither of them get the electron solely to itself. It's kind of shared in the middle of the two nucleuses. This shows this uh, oxygen atom sharing the electron, so you see some overlap between their energy levels. And if you remember, Covalent compounds are formed when two or more nonmetals are joined together. So again, your covalents are all sharing electrons. So let's review what the Lewis dot diagrams look like for compounds. 
So in this compound, it was formed by a sodium atom joining with a chlorine. And sodium is going to give its electron to chlorine. Give chlorine a full outer shell, and sodium will have a shell, full outer shell because it drops down. So this dot diagram looks like this. Or they can also be represented like this, where this line represents two electrons. So every time you see a bond between two elements, the more lines there, the more electrons that are being shared. So let's look at magnesium. It has two in its outer shell. Fluorine has seven. So this magnesium can give one to the fluorine, and then the fluorine is full. But the problem is magnesium still has one left, so it has to give it to another fluorine. So, so this can be written as Mg with the fluorine. Again, it has its bonds. And then we put the other one on the other side. In which it then can be written as F with the bar. Okay. And then our last one, water. Again, hydrogen has to give away two. And oxygen will accept them.